Hi, I'm Tom Carisi from the Dynamics 365 Fast Track team. Welcome to this tech talk on converting from unmanaged to managed solutions, a crucial step to healthy application lifecycle management within Dataverse. So today's agenda, we'll start with a solutions overview. What is a solution? We'll have a look at covering some layering and publishing and some deployment options. We'll then move on to unmanaged versus managed solutions, the difference between the two and some of the benefits of being in a managed state. We'll then move on to getting to a managed state, which will be a high level overview of the process to get solutions in non-developer environments to a fully managed state. Um, we'll then close by looking at some references, which will help you on your journey to achieving healthy ALM. Solutions overview. Solutions overview. So solutions are how developers author, package and maintain configuration and customizations that have extended Dynamics 365 customer engagement solutions. Solutions are always associated with a publisher. Now solution files are zipped XML files containing all definitions, configurations, customizations to Dataverse components. These then are exported from a source developer environment and imported to a target environment. Ideally, the solutions are unpacked and checked into a repository so a project can become source control centric, which enables benefits such as change control and just in time environment creation. Solution publishes. So every app and other solution components such as tables you create or any customizations you make is part of a solution. Because every solution has a publisher, you should always create your own publisher rather than using the default. You specify the publisher when you first create the solution. The publisher of a solution is where a component is created or considered the owner of that component. The owner of a component controls what changes other publishers of solutions, including that component, are allowed to make or restricted from making. It is possible to move the ownership of a component from one solution to another within the same publisher, but not across publishers. Once you introduce a publisher for a component in a managed solution, you can't change the publisher for the component. Because of this, it's best to define a single publisher so that you can change the layering model across solutions later. An unmanaged solution publisher does not own the component. So when you convert to managed, you are setting the owning publisher. Solutions lifecycle. You can create, update, upgrade and delete solutions. Creating a solution is where you first initiate a new solution, associate it with a publisher and then add some components. Updating a solution is where a solution with a higher version number is being imported to a target environment with some component changes or additions. Similar to update, the upgrading of a solution is where a solution is imported with a higher version number, but will also remove any components that are no longer in the solution, but are present in the target environment. So upgrade is required when a component needs to be deleted. For the fastest solution import process and business as usual deployments, it is recommended to use update deployments with the option of overwrite unmanaged customizations unchecked. Solution segmentation strategies. Solution segmentation strategies typically involve the separation of components either via component type or business area, although often there's a combination of the two. Implementations have often defined segmentation strategies as a workaround to achieve faster solution deployment times to minimize business impact during deployments. Now, recent investments and subsequent improvements have been made to the solution import performance, reducing the need for segmentation or for performance benefits. Now, it is recommended to use segmentation for different apps or business areas if they require different deployment teams and deployment cadence. An example of segmentation is how Microsoft packaged first party solutions, having solutions separated by different functional area, i.e. sales and service. Note that it does make sense for such components to still remain in their own solutions, such as connection references and PCF controls. Solution layers and dependencies. So solution layering is implemented at a component level. Managed and unmanaged solutions exist at different layers within an environment. In Dataverse, there are two distinct layers, managed and unmanaged. The unmanaged layer is where all unported unmanaged solutions and ad hoc customizations exist. All unmanaged solutions share a single unmanaged layer at the top. Whereas managed layers, these are all imported managed solutions and the system solutions exist at this level. When multiple managed solutions are installed, the last one installed is above the managed solution installed previously. 
This means that the second solution can customize the one installed before it. When two managed solutions have conflicting definitions, the runtime behavior is either last one wins or a merge logic is implemented. If you uninstall the managed solution, the managed solution below it takes effect. So now we have an understanding of what solutions are and how they can be used, let's take a closer look at unmanaged versus managed solutions. Unmanaged versus managed. So a solution is either managed or unmanaged. Unmanaged solutions are used in development environments where you make changes to your application. Unmanaged solutions can be exported as either unmanaged or managed. Exported unmanaged versions of a solution should be checked into source control, not just the zip file, but also the unpacked raw XML files. Unmanaged solutions should be considered your source of the Microsoft Power Platform assets. When an unmanaged solution is deleted, only the solution container is deleted, meaning the actual customizations or introduction of those components will still be effect in the default solution. So that just to confirm, the deletion of an unmanaged solution will not delete the associated components. Whereas managed solutions are what is recommended to be used to deploy to environments that is not a development environment, which would typically include UAT, preprod, prod. Managed solution can be serviced independently from other managed solutions in an environment, such as an ALM best practice, Managed solutions should be generated by exporting an unmanaged solution as managed and considered a build artifact. You can't edit components directly within a managed solution. Editing of a managed component can only be done in the associated unmanaged solution in a development environment or by adding the components to an additional unmanaged solution in dev, which will then create a dependency between the two solutions. You can't export a managed solution. When a managed solution is deleted, which, is, which would be the uninstall action, all customizations and extensions included are also removed. Managed solution benefits. Using unmanaged solutions in non-development environments has led to environment misalignment, unexpected deployment changes and manual deployment tasks, which ultimately leads to higher development costs and slower deployment cycles. The starting block to healthy and improved ALM within a project is ensuring you are in a managed solution state in non-development environments. Some of the benefits include ability to uninstall. As projects evolve, certain solutions may not be required or certain components based solutions may need to be removed. This can only be done reliably within managed solutions. Environment integrity. Ensuring each environment is aligned and in the expected state. Any manual unmanaged changes can be identified and removed quickly. Dependency management. Visibility of where a component was introduced and where it has been extended. Solution layering. Visibility of components customizations by each solution that contained it. Solution integrity. Managed solution components cannot be edited in target environments in the context of the solution. Easy to identify and revert manual changes. Clearly defined component ownership. The publisher of a managed solution owns the component. This is not the case in unmanaged solutions. Improved performance. Only deploying the delta components versus what is already in the target environment for faster deployments with update deployment method. Better process for eliminating components. Upgrade automates the deletion of components, reducing the risk of manual deletion across environments. All of these lead to safer, faster, reliable and repeatable deployments, which enables agility and the potential of increased deployment cadence. So now we understand what solutions are and the difference between unmanaged and managed solutions. Let's have a look at how you get to a managed solution state. Prerequisites. You will need at least two copies of your production environment. These will be used for your development where you will be creating the new solution, i.e. adding the components in, and then you will be obviously deploying these as managed and converting those unmanaged components in the other copy environment that you have taken. As an optional data hygiene step, you can go and have a look at the tables and some of the components and see if you can remove any um, to clear up the environment. A new solution will be used to contain all the unmanaged components. So in your development environment, either existing or the copy, you can create a new single unmanaged solution. This will be used to contain all of the Microsoft Dataverse model-driven apps, tables and other dependent components, such as forms, views, fields, charts, dashboards. Putting all these components together can help reduce the chance of cross-solution layering issues that may occur later when you update or introduce new model-driven apps and customizations. You could use more than one unmanaged solution if you are comfortable managing dependencies.
You could also have additional solutions for such components as cameras, apps, plugins, PCF and flow. You will need to define a testing strategy. Do you have test automation so you can validate that this managed conversion has been successful? You need to think about how you would do that validation. Will you have a clear test sign off of when you have converted to managed solutions? You will also need to consider a cutover strategy. So when will your in-flight development now need to be stopped and you will move over to the managed solutions? Will the development process change? So now that you're working in a managed solution state, will you now need to have multiple dev environments and you will need to think about how you will enable multiple developers in multiple development environments? Will the project become source control centric with automated builds and releases? So are you at a point now where you will start using Azure DevOps and Power Platform build tools or the PAC CLI or the GitHub Actions? Will all of your build and releases become automated? Will you be reducing the risk of manual deployments? Adding components to the newly created solution. So for unmanaged components, such as unmanaged custom tables, you will simply just add all of the components that you need for that solution. For any system managed components that you've customized, i.e. that you've extended, we recommend that you use segmentation for those specific tables. For example, if you've customized some fields on the account and contact, you only need to add those specific fields, not the whole entity. To do this, you just select those components. Note, if you do select all add all assets, you are essentially adding in all of the first party dependencies now and ones that are introduced in the future. For other components such as canvas apps, flows and portals, even plugins, you might want to add these to a different solution. Remember to always use a single publisher for all your solutions. <clears throat> and other customers that have been through this process have fed back that the XRM Toolbox Component Mover has been, has been very useful in terms of identifying all the components that need to be added into this newly created solution. Deploy and test the new solution as managed. So once you've created your new solution and adding in, added in all the unmanaged components, it's time to deploy that solution as managed into the target environment. So you export the unmanaged solutions from your dev environment as a managed solution. If there's an unmanaged solution in your existing target environment with the same name, the solution will not be able to import. So you will either need to delete that unmanaged solution in the target environment or ensure that the new solution you have created has a different name. Next, you will need to import the solution. You will need to use the Power Platform build tools or the PAC CLI and specifically make sure that you use the convert to managed option parameter. In terms of testing, there are various ways that you can test whether the managed conversion has been successful and all features are operating as expected. After your testing is completed and validated, you can deploy the new solution to production. If you've used a separate dev environment for the creation of the new unmanaged solution, you will need to deploy this back to BAU dev environments first. Consider how normal BAU development will be done post the move to managed solutions. Generally, this transition is part of a wider healthy ALM piece of work that would enable a source control centric approach with automated builds and releases. It is the enabler for safer, faster and reliable deployments. To recap the process. The challenge is identifying all the unmanaged components or changes that have been made in an environment. It might be that you have a set, managed, set number of unmanaged solutions and it's quite an easy process of just adding in all of the components that have been moved as part of those unmanaged solutions. Or it might be that you have 200 plus unmanaged solutions, some inside the solution, some outside of the solution, and then you will need to have a process of working out if all of those components have been added into the solution. So to review the process, firstly, we're taking copies of the production environment. One will be used to create the unmanaged solution and one will be used to deploy the solution as managed and then you'll be doing testing. You will need to create the unmanaged solution and add in all the required components, ensuring that they have the same publisher. You'll need to delete the unmanaged solutions from the target environment. This step can be done before you import the solution or after you have imported the solution. Once you have finished adding all the components, you'll need to export the unmanaged solution as managed and import into the target environment, making sure that you're using the convert to managed option. 
you will then need to conduct full regression testing. Repeat the process until you've validated that all unmanaged components have been converted to managed. Once you are happy with the process, you will deploy this solution through all your target environments until you reach production. Here is a visual representation of the steps to get to a managed state. Step one would be to create two minimal copies of production. Step two would be to create the new unmanaged solution. Step three would be where you add all the unmanaged components to the solution. Step four, we export the solution as managed. And then step five, we import the solution to the target environment using the convert to manage property. Step six, we delete all the unmanaged solutions. Step seven, we conduct regression testing. Identifying unmanaged components. Here is an API call that uses the solution component summaries table to identify unmanaged changes in an environment. This is not a catch-all, but certainly will help you identifying unmanaged changes um, in an environment. This can be used directly within the browser, or you could use it via an external service such as Postman. There are additional tools in XRM Toolbox that may be able to help you further identify unmanaged changes. Review solution layers. The Maker Portal offers the capability to identify and contributing customizations to a component by which solution and the relating layer, as well as any changes from the active layer. You can review the XML for each solution customizations. Documentation. References and documentation. The general ALM documentation is a great place to further learn solution concepts and also contains many scenarios with examples. The ALM blog post, which contains feature updates and outlook to a longer term roadmap. There's also a video from the CAT team who speak to one of the internal dynamics teams who have successfully transitioned to a managed solution state during their wider healthy ALM initiatives.